I will welcome all of you to the mighty institution Standard High School Zana. I'm by name of Kahes Hirare, the teacher of geography. Today we are going to study geography paper two, a topic that is studied in senior three and senior four is what we are going to see today. So my dear candidates and sub-candidates, get prepared, get a notebook, get a pen, and a pencil for drawing the sketches, and we start. We are going to talk about agriculture in Africa. To be specific, we are going to see sugarcane growing in South Africa. Remember, we see what is grown, where is it grown, factors favoring the growing of that particular crop, the benefits or the contributions, the importance of growing that crop, the problems faced by the farmers, and then how we can solve those problems. Now, what is being grown in South Africa? It is sugarcane. That is the crop. Where is sugarcane in South Africa grown? Sugarcane in South Africa is grown in KwaZulu land in Natal province. Check on this map of ours. This is a simple sketch map of South Africa. And this part we are seeing here in the extreme east is our KwaZulu land. This is the Natal province. This one here. And where I have put red dots, we are now using the key. That is the Natal province. That is where sugarcane growing is done in South Africa. We, grow, we, we have seen that sugarcane is grown. Where is sugarcane grown? In Natal province. And now we are going to extract this part of the Natal. And then we see it as it is here. This is the sketch map of the Natal province showing areas where sugarcane is grown. Check where we are having the red dots. These ones. These are the areas where sugarcane is grown in South Africa, be specific in the Natal province. And check some of other features especially the drainage features around the areas where the sugar cane is grown. We are going to see that the area is full of many rivers, like river Umuzikuru, rivers Umgeni, rivers Tugera, rivers like Muforosi, river Mukuse, and others. We can see Lake St. Lucia also in the north of the Natal province. Meaning that the land is well drained, the land has enough water, the water is reliable, hence supporting the growing of sugarcane in the province. These towns here, the black dots on our sketch map, the Empangeni, Entumeni, Daban, Dunwall, and others, these are the refining centers. This is where the sugar cane, when it is cut, it is taken to these centers where you are seeing the black spots for processing, where we are going to get the finished products. These will act as the industries that use the sugar cane as a raw material to get different products. Now we are going to talk about the process of planting the sugarcane. How is the sugarcane planted? What do we plant? Do we plant the seeds? Do we plant uh, the leaves? Do we plant the stem? What do we plant? Automatically, we plant the stems. So these stems are chopped, the stems of the sugarcane are chopped in the length of 40 to 45 centimeters, then immersed in hot water of about 50 degrees Celsius. 
What is the importance of putting the stems that are going to be planted in the hot water to kill those uh, the, the insects, to kill the, the uh, to remove the diseases from those stems before they are planted. Otherwise, we can plant those stems when they are infected, and it will end up giving us an infected product. So when they are immersed in hot water, the vectors are killed for around two hours. Then we remove those uh, stains of the sugar cane that are of around 40 centimeters in length, and then we plant them in the soil. It will take those stains a period of about nine months. Then the harvesting period can start. Harvesting is done between 9 to 20 months. And the harvesting is done in intervals so that we can ensure harvesting all year round. Not harvesting everything and you keep the garden empty of the sugar cane. That is the process of planting and harvesting the sugar cane. We have seen where the sugar cane is grown. We have seen how the sugar cane is grown. And now we are going to see the factors that favor the growing of the sugar cane in Natal province. Those conditions, remember factors, may be physical, may also be human. So let's start with the physical factors. Physical factors that have encouraged the growing of sugar cane in South Africa. As usual, when we are writing the factors, endeavor to include a right adjective. Right adjective. Tell us that factor you are talking about. And then the use of that factor. I will give an example. It is about soils. The factor is soil. So we are going to say presence of fertile. So fertile is the adjective that will be attached on soil. The soil alone cannot support the growth of sugar cane. But the fertile soil will support the growth of sugar cane. So we are going to say presence of fertile soil. What is the use of the fertile soil as far as growing of sugarcane is concerned? That favors or encourages or supports the growth of sugarcane. That is how you should write your points. Presence of fertile soils in South Africa, in Natal province, or around River Mkorosi, around River Togera, and others that favor the growth of sugarcane. I'll give another physical factor. Land. The point is land. Which adjective can we attach on land? And what is the use of the land as far as the growing of sugarcane in South Africa, in Natal province, is concerned. So we can say extensive. We can say large land. Of about 362,000 hectares, where large-scale growing of sugarcane takes place in Natal province. We have put the adjective, the factor under the use. You are going to be very okay. And that's how you are going to get the distinction one of geography. We can talk about another physical factor, rainfall. As I have already told you, avoid the point of climate, favorable climate. You have combined, you have compressed very many points in one. If you say a favorable climate, you have put the point of rainfall, you have put the point of temperature, you have put the point of humidity in one point. You are losing, so call it availability or presence of reliable rainfall that supports the growth 
that encourages the growth of sugar cane in Natal province. Tell us the presence of hot temperatures of about 27 degrees Celsius that encourages the sweetening of the canes as well as harvesting of the sugar cane. Tell us the high relative humidity of above 75% that increases the moisture in the soil, hence encouraging the growth of sugar cane. Tell us the relatively flat landscape that encourages mechanization on the farms, hence large-scale production. Don't forget to tell us uh, the, the low altitude. The Natal province is found at a low altitude characterized by hot temperatures. The hot temperatures encouraging the sweetening of the canes. Those are the physical factors. But I've put those physical factors in this manner. The adjective and the correct one. Don't say good soil. Don't say enough land. But the correct adjective, the factor, and then the use of that factor. In a summative way, we have talked about fertile soils, we have talked about extensive land, we have talked about reliable rainfall, we have talked about hot temperatures, we have talked about low relative, uh, we have talked about low altitude and relatively flat landscape. Those are the physical factors. We are now the human factors. The same procedure must be used while writing the human factors. Availability of adequate capital. When I say adequate, the word adequate is the adjective. Then the capital is the factor. And what is the use of the capital? To buy modern machinery and for paying the workers. Tell us that availability of skilled and semi-skilled labor provided by the nationals of South Africa for working on the plantations. So the point is labor, but I've said skilled and semi-skilled. I can call it adequate labor. We cannot forget to talk about the market because after growing the sugar cane, if you don't have the market, you cannot get in where to the sugar cane. So we are going to say ready market or large market, abundant market where the sugar cane is grown and other factors and other factors. Now, what you need to do is writing those factors in the correct way and manner, following the correct adjectives and factors and then the use. Send to my email as you're seeing on your screen and then I will mark you and send you.